Okay, friends, Yossi here. Today we're going to look if you should still be investing in the core. Should you be buying in Toronto downtown's core, Toronto downtown, or other areas? Is the downtown core still worth it to invest? Yossi Kaplan here, Toronto Real Estate Agent Mortgage Broker, Research Realty and Search Mortgage. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, everyone, for looking at all the videos, um, putting the comments. Yesterday I put a video, How to Tackle 2020, explaining some of the, the principles that are coming in. Uh, the real estate market is changing, the skyline is changing, the horizon is changing. You gotta pay attention to what's happening because if you're gonna keep like lemming, just doing what was done yesterday, you're gonna fall off the cliff. So you don't wanna fall off the cliff, you wanna be step ahead, so there you go. Uh, let's, let's, let's get a step ahead here. So today's topic is if you need to be downtown. Boom. So go to Google. If you put 2TC Subway, it's a really cute little page. There you go. Some maps, some nice trains, everything is clean. Oh, it's so lovely. Okay, put the word busy. Uh, okay, that's, that's the truth of the subway, my friends. That is the truth of the subway. This is what the Toronto subway looks like on rush hour, which is now extending to probably four to five hours each and every day. And even weekends are becoming just intolerable. Okay, Toronto has only two subway lines. One goes up and down, and one goes <laughs> one goes across, up and down and across. That's it. That's all we got. It's just not enough. Um, sometimes the subway is closed. The subway gives you all these weird, very generic, cryptic messages like an operational issue on a track. Um, and most people will tell you somebody jumped. Sadly, please don't. Um, but you know, whatever it is, uh, it's just not looking good. Do you, do you think that being close to the subway in Toronto is a good idea? I mean, look at this. Oh, maybe this is China. This is China, okay. Back to, <laughs> this is Toronto. Doesn't look that much different. This is Toronto. This is Toronto. This is the broad view. This is Toronto. Okay, so this is, this is not China, this is Toronto. Look at this. So, do you want to be close to the subway line? Does it make any sense? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run you through uh, a few tabs here, and then we're going to jump into the condo calculator, and I'll show you the numbers, core versus King West versus West End, or whatever, any, any end, and, and we'll see how it is. Okay, so this is the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Yossi Kaplan. I'm putting a lot, a lot of videos, and thank you everyone very, very much for commenting liking subscribing watching hating <laughs> thumb up thumb down it's all good lots of videos and information is really becoming something now uh, the Twitter I'm adding some new stuff so I'm adding uh, by default all the vice videos and some other channels it just going in there to make to make it uh, that's kind of cool these uh, info moving infographics okay so I'm just adding a lot of stuff here especially over the holidays so it's not boring and uh, those that could be kind of funny, silly, um, some other things. It doesn't matter. Just just get some good content going. We'll see how that goes. Tell me if you like it or not. Uh, Yossi.searchrealty.co. Okay, so if you go to Yossi.searchrealty.co, you're going to get this page here. Type in Toronto. Okay, and I'll pick the C1, which is the downtown, the downtown uh, area. And then I'll go to the filters. Do it with me. Uh, leave the zero bet so you can get the studios online, but we can put the bath into one and the minimum price I'll put 400. There's nothing under four. <clears throat> and, now, and now you'll get some, uh, some good residential properties, okay? View the listings and we're going to zoom out, zoom in. Uh, now C1, so you know, starts at Young Street and goes uh, west to Dufferin. Okay, you see here along the, the track and from the water to Bloor. Uh, north of Bloor will be C2 and the east of Young will be C8 of north of that will be C9. These are the Treb districts. These are the areas that the real estate system is divided on. They're not geographic areas. You're not going to walk around and there will be a sign. It's just in the system. It's just something that we realtors look at. It's that division uh, been designed long long time ago it could be changed but for now it's good enough 
Uh, so this is the area you're looking at. Specifically, you lo we're looking at Young Street and Bay Street, the core, which will be from King to College, okay? Maybe even all of it are blurred these days, but really, it's from King to College. Uh, there you go. Maybe I'll include Queen's Park in the core. That's already north end of the core. But more or less, that, that's what you're looking at right here. Okay, that's the area. Now, the area here, if you look at, uh, let's go to condos.ca. In condos.ca, by the way, yesterday showed 710. They added some units. 124 sold. Yesterday was 50 or 80, something like that. And you can see the prices jumped a lot. And now it's showing a 10.78 increase over last year, 11%. And when you look here, we actually broke the sales record of all times on condos.ca. We just broke it with the stats that showed up today. 778 a foot. Uh, this is in January. It's supposed to be a low month, right? January is supposed to be like a down month, winter. Ha, ha, ha. No. Okay. So the previous record on condos.ca was 770 for June 2019. And you can see 2019 is basically the lowest uh, it, that it has here is 741. Okay, that's 30 bucks a foot less and it just doesn't go but that's it and now seven seven eight um, I don't really see prices coming down from here uh, I think the supply uh, is not touching the demand the demand is massive and that has to do a lot with immigration from other countries into Canada and of course from around the province into Toronto and from other provinces into Toronto as well because it's all about the jobs okay the rentals, the rent are steady. Uh, the rents are about four bucks a foot. Three, four, four, that's average. Okay. Um, Seventy-four. Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll let it stabilize. I do believe that there's a bit of a softening in the rental market. You'll see maybe $100 a month less on some units because there's a lot of units on the market right now. And we adding about say 15 18 20 thousand units uh, every year now the prices went up so high i think they might have hit the absorption point where people just can't afford anymore so it's going to stabilize somewhere that's that's the nature of rent uh, but what i want to talk about specifically is i want to look into the downtown core and say is it worth to buy the downtown core so the idea of buying the core is that you do not need to use the subway the idea of a lot of uh, people that buying on the subway line is that you can use the subway. So there's really two types of people that are buying in the downtown core. <laughs> they, most of them want to be on the subway, mostly because they come from China, which is uh, subway dominated. And all you know, you know, I've been to Hong Kong. Yeah, you got to be on the subway. That's the prize. That's the goal. That's where you want to be. And a lot of money coming from Hong Kong, especially these days. Therefore, Hong Kong money knows that it wants to be close to the subway. So it's buying next to the subway. But maybe it's not looking at these pictures here. And maybe it didn't actually try to be on the subway at rush hour. Even not at rush hour. It's just not fun. Rush hour overcrowding. Yeah, it's just insane. Okay? That is not fun. So what are we going to do here? We're going to look at... Uh, a few things so here's the here's the Toronto map okay that's a 3d map let me zoom in here and we're gonna zoom in you see it's huge the place is massive okay we are living in a massive massive place there's lots of room there's tons and tons of room and we do have a green belt running nonetheless above the green belt below the green belt, there's so much room to build uh, we coming from an era we used to you know live in villages and we're still thinking like we lived in villages one family, one home. Forget about it. We have to live up. We have to live in a vertical manner and make all these vertical construction things very good and viable. So that's how we do it. And right here, when you zoom in, you see that the core, that's the core right here. That's the core right here. It's not that large. And what you're gonna see in the core along Young and Bay Street are buildings of 60, 80, and 100 stories coming up very, very soon. Just everywhere. I was at the high floor at 488 University the other day, uh, so it's here, right here, and I was able to see 522, so it'll be somewhere down here. Well, yeah, I don't think it may not show exactly on that, but it's this is the corner, Dundas University, okay. And when I was looking south here, you just see so many buildings, 
and they're all in the shade none of them actually have sunlight anymore so when you buy you know uh, when you buy exposure it doesn't really matter you're gonna get a little bit of a discount if you buy northern exposure and you're gonna pay a little more if you buy southern or, or west exposure east is also good but if you're looking into another building does it really matter which way you face you got to be in the unit and see what it is if you're buying pre-construction and you're all happy that you bought south facing unit and a 40th floor just to discover three years later you walk into this unit you see there's a building 100 feet across from you and that building is also 60 stories and you're looking into just just a brick or a glass wall so views don't really count anymore you're paying 1500 a foot 1800 a foot 2000 a foot for this unit does it make any sense how much rent you're gonna you're gonna need i'm gonna show you in a second so the argument that people say we want to buy in the core you want to buy by the subway lines you can get quickly to downtown to the job place but how many job places are actually in downtown there are quite a few the thousands of jobs but considering the metro of toronto alone the gta is about 8 million people and in ontario is something like 13 or 15 million there's a lot a lot of jobs available not just here look at this place look at this giant giant place okay you look in here you're probably looking at about five million people do you think all these five million people need to live on the subway do you think all these five million people need to work right what that it says toronto down here of course not do you really think there's no life outside the 401 and the 407 do you really think there's no life in any of these places let me zoom out even more for you okay this is the real this is this is the real toronto right here this is the real toronto it's all along the lake yes there's a big center here but all along the lake these are your opportunities if if a year ago or two years ago i would say you know you gotta invest in toronto you gotta go king west i think if you can afford king west you should if you want to buy downtown i don't know um, i would like to see the unit or get something very very special for example 488 university is a very special project i think that one is totally worth buying especially now because we see an assignment at the 1200 a foot that's totally good because across the street the 481 uni university where the TD bank is they're selling at two thousand dollars a foot eighteen hundred a foot so I can get the same product on the subway line for a third less so if you can do it I would if you're not and you're thinking about it and you're not sure every month like I told you at the end of last year it's about one percent more so you're gonna pay one percent more so that six hundred thousand dollar unit will cost you another 6,000 every month and at the end of the year it'll cost you 12 percent more something like the 670. the average condo in toronto right now is 660 so at the end of the year that condo will be 700 to 720 thousand dollars the exact same condo by the time it took you to think about it and not sure about it that's the cost of learning that is going to be the cost of your learning of your education that's that's 10 percent 12 percent because that's what it's going however all along here there are so many opportunities and to me a lot of these opportunities you can actually get yourself a house a house all over here especially if you're gonna live there I think it's it's a viable opportunity if you look at the condos it's a bit more complicated because condos are relatively more expensive to houses and you gotta be very specific where you are so location is very very important for condo especially if you want to walk now, there's a lot of stuff happening in Mississauga. There's a lot of stuff happening in Brampton, Hamilton, Guelph, Kitchener, Waterloo, all the way to Brantford, okay? Um, all along the lake, Niagara Falls is very, very hot right now, and I think it will continue being hot, Fort Erie, all these areas here. If you are focusing on Toronto, um, you have a lot of options, and it's not just the downtown. Look here. This is the downtown. Here's, um, that must be Queen's Park okay i believe it is if not let me know uh this is the island this is the leslie spit this is uh cherry street this is the google spice city right here okay the dawn river come down here the humber river come down here anything between the dawn and the humber for the last 200 years was colonized as toronto and before that was a, a thriving area where tribes from all over the area come to meet toronto toronto means a meeting place why because all the rivers came down here so it'll be easy to lug your stuff over the river and come to the meeting place in between the two rivers to exchange to live and to enjoy the life that the lake gave you therefore all this area here looking all the way from here 
to all the way from here, I believe that is a viable opportunity, okay? You don't have to go on a subway and, and say it's too far, it's too close. As a matter of fact, in uh, yesterday's video, there's some interesting comments, but uh, two people kind of exchange ideas, what's too far and what's not too far. So this person here, W, says, is Galleria on the park a good buy, even though it is so far from the core? So far from the core. So this person is holding the belief that far from the core is a problem. Why is it a problem? It's a problem because when, when you come from this perspective, and it's probably an Asian perspective, I need to be in the center, I need to be in the core, it assumes that all life is happening in the core. There's nothing outside it. Of course, that's not true, and that's a very limited view of th seeing things. And in the past, in the last 10 or 20 years, maybe 10, it made sense to buy along Young and Bay Street. It's close to U of T, all the rich Asian students. Hold on, the steam going strong here. Here we go. Okay, so you have a lot of students coming from China to U of T. They got lots of money. They don't know what's going on. They need to be close to the school. All the doctors come in the university. They all want to be close. So we buy condos, university, and Bay Street, and we, and we lease it to them for crazy amounts of money, and everyone's happy. And that's very good. And that can still happen. U of T is growing, and U of T is a huge economic engine for Canada and the region, and especially the local because it brings all these students from outside of Canada, they pay an arm and a leg to be in the school, then they rent, maybe they buy. I've seen, I've seen Chinese students buying condos on Bay Street for the few years they're gonna be in Toronto because they buy the condo for cash and then they live in a condo while they're in school and they sell it, make some money and, and stay in Canada, go back, whatever. It, this, I've, I've, I've seen it, it happens. Maybe less now with the 15%, but I've been in condos and the people told me, yes, we are international students, we bought the condo so we have a place to live and then we're going to sell it later. Okay, fine. Um, so here, this person says, 10 minute uh, walk to Dauphin or Lenza Station. This is, by the way, from Galleria. Uh, too many by bus, five stops. So this person said, it's okay. And then this person said, no, it's actually really, really far. And this guy rep responds, no, it's not far. So this is all in the, in the eye of the beholder. What's far? And the question is, where, do you, where are you going? Okay, so you can't say it's too far before you know where you're starting and where you're going to. So this person here says it's so far from the core, but why do you need to be in the core? If you need to be in the core, just go live in the core. That's totally fine. There's so many options for you, um, and there's more and more options. There's thousands and thousands of options to live in the core. Okay, go here, downtown. And you can start unchecking areas here. And that's what I'm doing with condos.ca. One day they'll hire me to be the spokesperson. <laughs> okay, so I'm just removing all these areas. I leave the waterfront. Maybe they have an area called core. Oh, they do. Okay, here we go. Core, just the core. Okay, so that here, here's the core according to condos.ca. Again, that's just their definition. There's no real like law what the core is, but there you go. Okay, analytics, it's 1022 a foot. That's what it's taking right now. Okay, and there's lots and lots of condos in the core. There's the most amount of condos in the core than any other area. So 1022, uh, based on 342 recent sales. Let's see what King West says here way less condos 998 so it's uh 24 dollars less based on 941 okay so that's interesting so here king west shows a bit of a lesser value queen west is actually doing really well with 1066 better than the core and 10.6 condo values increase and the core itself was three and a half so queen west according to the stats and condos out here is a better investment okay so what do you need to be close to you don't need to be close to anything because your tenant or the person you're going to rent to a uh, sell to flip to is going to choose the unit they buy from you based on what they need not based on your assumptions not based on what you think is best but what they think is best 
Now, if everyone thinks that you know the best is the left, then it's the left. If the best thing, if the, everyone thinks that the best is the right, then it's the right. I'm not here to judge or tell you what's best. I'm here to show you options and perspectives. And as an investor, I think that this is very appealing to me. This area is appreciating very fast, and actually, there's way less condos in this area than in the core, which is appreciating. This is three times the appreciation. Queen West is appreciating three times as fast than the core and it's worth more than the core. The core is only 3.5% appreciation and 10.22 a foot. That's why I think that being close to the subway, it doesn't always make sense, okay? And, and do you need to be on the subway? Now, if you're the person that wanna be on the subway, need to be on the subway, think all their life depending on the subway, sure, that's okay. 197 Young, for example, is an amazing building. I really like it. There's uh, buildings on St. Joseph. Um, there's some areas like Charles Street. You gotta be very picky because there's so many buildings on Charles Street that it's really easy uh, to get confused there. Let's see if they got anything uh, along Charles Street. I'll show you what I mean. That should be. So it'll be here. Well, Everything. So 10, 1081 a foot, and the condo values here have gone down, down based on 391 sales. It means the younger blue is actually going down in value. It is still very expensive, but according to condos.ta stats, it actually went down, which is really interesting. Queen West went up by 10.6 percent. A core went up by three and a half percent. The young and blue went down. That means it it reached the peak of price at which the market is saying that's all I'm willing to invest here. Okay? Now here you go. 877 and for that's a lot of old buildings here. And and less sales of course. So a lot of old buildings, lower dollar per foot, probably higher condo fees, but it still go up the price. You can see here 935, that's still quite cheap relatively. 8.2, but it, it's going up good. Okay. So I, th I think you know you get the idea if if you, if if you start to look at these things from from a big perspective, you start to see other areas that are doing better than the core. Okay, that's cheap. Twenty percent increased. Uh, it's only eighteen sales, but you can see if anything comes to the market in the Kensington area, everyone wants it. That's also Chinatown. Okay, Alexandra Park has got nothing, so it's just a bunch of old stuff. Same here. Okay, you really have to be in an area. Casa Loma went down by a lot, by 105 sales. That could be a lot of the expensive uh, townhomes that went down. And that's really interesting, actually. 5.2. Okay, but you go just across the street, and it's 9.2 percent increase. So it's 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 hard to tell from these numbers, uh, but overall, you want to see this is what it's give you. Overall, kind of condos are up, and the average. Wherever you look at the main page or this page is around the 750, 760, 770 we saw, we saw last year. This comes up and down, but you can see it's, it's coming up about a percent a month overall on average. The GTA is coming up a percent a month. So if you come up a percent a month and you can invest less, why wouldn't you do it? I mean, if you invest more, Yes, your 1% will be worth more, but your risk is also much, much higher. Maybe you can split your investment. Instead of buy one $1.2 million unit, you can buy two of them, 500000 and 700000 So take a look here at the counter calculator. Um, I'm putting here Toronto Core, one bedroom, 500 square feet, Toronto King West. King West probably not even, like, I'll just leave it there, and West End. And let's say that the core, uh, let's say right now with the core, you paid per foot. That's my list here. Let's say I paid seventeen hundred a foot for the unit at the core. So I paid eight hundred fifty thousand dollars for the five hundred square feet, which is happening these days. Uh, and then I paid seven twenty five in King West, fourteen fifty a foot. Then I paid another area. I paid twelve hundred a foot. Okay, this is the exact same unit, just because the location is different. I'm paying various prices, so higher or lower PSF. So the deposits one seventy, one forty five, one twenty. Then my five, my Four deposits of five percent each comes to forty-two five in this case, thirty-two two fifty in this case, and thirty thousand in this case. 
and my total deposit is still the 20,000 and the mortgage got to take a 680 here 580 here 480 here amazing how it uh, lined up <laughs> uh, the maintenance fees I'm given a reasonable maintenance fee. there's 350 a month I think it, it probably 400 by now okay. let me put a point eight that's 400 municipal tax that's probably high I think that'll be a little lower the city is not going to assess it that high because it's still 500 square feet and obviously you can see that I'm paying more tax uh, for the sa same unit in this location uh, because it's by percentage so that is another thing you can actually uh, appeal that but we're not going to get that's a whole other complication and the mortgage let's see a two point uh, let's give it 2.99 percent three percent so 3200 here 2700 here and 2268 here in my total monthly costs for the core unit the unit that I paid eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars for five hundred square feet and it cost me about four thousand dollars a month this unit that I paid a little less I paid 725 I paid 125 thousand less it's gonna cost me 3443 say 3500 and this unit here is gonna cost me 2900 a month okay so now let's look at my break-even cost so my break-even is my cost so this is the same four thousand thirty four twenty nine the cost per bedroom, since I have only one bedroom in each of these units, uh, then it's the same cost. And the dollar per rent required is almost $8 a foot here, 6.89 a foot here, and 5.849 a foot here. Now, when you go back to condos.ca, if you look at the rentals and the leases, uh, my average is 3.44 a foot. So this is about half of what I need to achieve. Double that will be about here. So I'm only achieving about half on the average. Obviously, King West, the rent's a little higher. So let's put King West here. Okay. Go to the analytics and switch to the rent. And right now, my rent has dropped a bit. It's the beginning of the year, so I may... I, I just want listing. That's the problem. But we'll say it's 4 bucks a foot. Okay, we'll just... 2,200 units, can't be wrong. We'll just say it's $4 a foot. Okay, that's what I'm getting here, $4 a foot. And if I put the core, the core, go to rent, it was $4. It's actually just the same. Okay, so $4 a foot. So I'm getting $4 a foot. <coughs> that means I get $2,000 for this unit. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, $4 a foot is the same half of what I need to get. Now, how much rent do I get? Let's say magic happened and I did get 2,500 a month for that one bedroom, 500 square feet unit. I'm not talking about furnished units here. I'm talking about a regular unit and the tenant will stay with me, say for three or four years, which is what I want, the term of the school or something like that. Uh, let's say King West, I get 2,150. I may get a bit more if it's summer. I'll give you 2,200. And the one bedroom at the other side, Okay, that's about right. So I'm losing fifteen hundred bucks a month, fourteen sixty seven bucks a month. Okay, I'm losing twenty twenty uh twenty five hundred rent, I'm losing uh fourteen sixty seven a month. Okay, that needs to be That's my gross income. No, that's my income. Okay. I'm losing here twelve forty three and I'm losing here eight hundred and eighteen dollars a month. Okay. Now I can obviously balance it by putting that funds back into my account every month out of pocket or increasing my deposit. But for the sake of arguments you can see that this unit here will lose eighteen thousand dollars a month. We'll lose. This lo will lose fifteen thousand uh, a year, sorry. Eighteen a year, fifteen a year and 10,000 a year. And the return is negative at 10.36%, 10.28%, 8.18%, and that's cash on cash, cash flow analysis. The investors are hoping, of course, that the units will go up and up and up, and that's how they're gonna make up for these numbers, which I guarantee you they don't actually calculate. But how much more can a unit that's been sold at $1,700 a foot go up? Let's say it went up by $100 a foot. That's only $50,000. So now the unit will sell to the next person for $900,000.
that doesn't make any sense because the cost of selling the real estate the taxes the lawyer the headache getting the tenant out all these things maybe some vacancy it's going to cost way more than fifty thousand so that's not worth it so i need to wait until the unit worth at least a million in order to do that so at a million that means it it went up by three hundred dollars a foot to two thousand dollars a foot one million you go 2,000 a foot in order for that unit that can flip it but that's going to be take a little longer even though the market is going up by 10% every year the market is going up by 10% every year is the resale market is a market that is currently averaging 764 a foot or about a thousand a foot on a resale downtown right so the resale market downtown how do I do this the resale market downtown, that's the accumulation average of all these areas here, is giving me about a thousand a foot, 991. Say a thousand, okay? The units that are I'm buying now is 1700 a foot. It's going to take a few years for the entire market to come to 1700. That means that those units bought at a very high prices may have to wait a few more years until the market catches up to them. So if the building actually takes four or five years to build, you may have done a really, really good deal because by the time the building is built, the market is expected to reach that kind of price because all pre-construction now is really buying future price. You're buying it to the future. And then it may make sense to you and the rent eventually will come up and cash it. Okay, because the rents, you see, you see here, the rents has reached the peak. This is just the beginning of the year, but it, it, it will slowly catch up, not as fast as sales. That means that your ROI throughout the year is going to get lesser and lesser. That is the case where I'm telling you guys to start looking at assignments and start looking at resale. The new construction game is becoming very difficult downtown because if you want to be close to the subway, you're going to pay crazy prices that you just can't pay for them through rent. So you have to flip it. You have to flip it for very, very high rents. But the problem is when you flip it to very high rents, uh, so for very high rates, the rents you're going to achieve, the next person who's buying from you the assignment, will be hard pressed to achieve these kind of rents because if this, if we're averaging four dollars a foot even five dollars a foot in rent and i need to achieve nine or ten dollars a foot there's a huge discrepancy here so whoever's going to buy the unit from you at a million dollars is you know because now when it's a million dollars the carrying cost of you went up by five hundred dollars a month or six hundred dollars a month that's twenty dollars a day more every day for the unit can you get that rent so that's that's a conundrum here Okay, that is a conundrum, and that's what you got to do. You got to make sure that what you buy makes sense to you, and you can actually live with what you buy. If you want more of a depth analysis, uh, if you're buying, if you're in the market to buy or sell, if you're wondering if you should be buying or selling, give me a shout. I'll help you understand your options. I'll help you calculate what you need to know, and I'll also help you understand wh where do you stand and look if it makes sense to buy, to sell, to stay in a unit, to rent it out. We can look at all the options. That's what I do with investors. I meet with the investors. And I basically go through all the options and explain what's going on. And we look at, look at this beautiful one. And, and look at all the options and see what's available and what are the options available to you. Sometimes we reconfigure a portfolio, which means we take some older units, we sell them, we invest in new ones. Sometimes we buy in the core if it's a great deal, especially if it's an assignment. Sometimes we buy outside of the core, especially if it's a pre-construction. Uh, Keeley, for example, they have a few units left. That was such a good deal and it still is. Okay, that's really nice. Look, you can see uh, DNA 3 from here. That is a really gorgeous, gorgeous picture. Okay. That's very good. I think that's good for today. I think we've covered a lot of ground here. Uh, if you want the condo calculator, just go and download it. Uh, go to the condo calculator.ca, condo calculator.ca, and it'll take you to the page. Put your name, put your email, download, and the system will send you an email with the link to this page. Just download it. If you want to see listings, go, go on the side here. Whatever you hit will open all kinds of listings for you that you can look. Follow me on Twitter. Please like and subscribe on YouTube. The kids are screaming. It's all good. It's a great day. Have a great time, my friends. Talk to you later.